all the strange things happening around here, one thing after another, and it keeps getting even more unbelievable. I mean... Hey, whoa, hold on there. Oh, right, I guess we should introduce ourselves. Yes, sorry, let's start over. Hi, I'm Taylor, and this is Jamie, and we live in a town called Bethlehem. Our parents ran an inn right outside of town. I help the family business, and just like any other kid, have super fun chores to do around here. It's usually pretty calm around here. I mean, as calm as it can get living in an inn. There are always extra people in the house and animals in the stable we're having to take care of. Don't get me wrong, we always have travelers coming in, and my dad always has stuff for us to do. But lately, it's been insane. There are people coming from everywhere. The whole town is packed. There are more visitors here. There isn't any room left. Wait. We don't have any room left in the inn, and there are more animals that so we'll take care of than I've ever seen. You don't believe us? Come on, we'll show you. This quiet little town has some big things happening these days.
whole town. Or at least that's what we've heard. We kind of try to stay behind the scenes so we can see, hear, and watch what's going on. And there is a lot going on. Listen. I'm ready to go home. Why do we have to travel so far? Well, remember, the king called for a census, so we had to come to Bethlehem with the whole family. A census? What's that? A census is when the country goes back to their homeland to be counted. Wow, no wonder so many people are around here. I'm so tired of walking. When will it be over? Are we there yet? <laughs> Come on. Let's go find the rest of the family and find a place to stay for the night. Oh, that census is why all these people are here. This afternoon, I even saw a man and his pregnant wife in town. They came to the inn for a place to stay, but we didn't have any room left. So I showed them the stable where they could at least stay warm. You did what? That's no place for a pregnant woman. That's where the animals are. But there was no place left. At least this woman dry, right? Come on, I'll show you. Shh, stay back. We don't want to disturb her. Are you doing all right, Mary? Let's just make this as comfortable as we can. There was no place left inside, but they said we could stay here for the night to at least be protected. That was the kind of innkeeper. There isn't much room left, it seems, including here. Is it time, Mary? Only God knows, but I sure hope so. Come, little baby. The world has been waiting a long time for you. <laughs>
you think it really could be? Could be what? The baby, the prophecy we've been told our whole lives, could come true here? You mean for us unto a child is born, unto us a son is given? I don't know, but I do know that there's some unexplainable things happening. Did you see the shepherds? Well, of course I saw shepherds. We live surrounded by fields. No, I mean the shepherds that came here last night. What? Shepherds here? Shepherds are dirty, stinky, and not usually in town. Are you sure you weren't dreaming? I don't know. It sure feels like it. They were talking about a bright light and singing and... Seriously? I think I need to see this one for myself. I'm still amazed. Do not be afraid, they said. I have never seen anything like that in my life. Why would the angels come to us? Angels, wow, angels? Where should we go? What did the angels say again? Do not be afraid. I don't know how that was possible. Do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of joy. A baby has been born this night, and he is Christ the King. How cool is that? The prophecies are being fulfilled. But why would the angels come and tell us? Yeah, we're just shepherds. It's going to be hard for anyone to believe us. And it's going to be even harder for us not to tell anybody we meet about this incredible thing. Well, first we have to go see what the angels told us. Let's go and see. Find, find the star, the light of the world, the baby. A baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. A king, our savior. He is here.
baby here in Bethlehem. I never would have guessed that God's plan would start right here in Bethlehem. And that young couple, so ordinary and so quiet. Let's hurry so that way we can see them before the shepherds get there. Joseph, he's here. He's actually here. Yes, the angel was right. You are to give birth to a son. We are to name him Jesus. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, the light of the world. Yes, God is with us. This baby is the son of God. Okay, a baby and shepherds. This is also unusual. I told you strange things were happening around here. And did you see that bright light? 
You mean that star above us only seems to get brighter and brighter? Yes, I've never seen anything like it. How could anyone ever miss it? And did you hear Mary call the baby the light of the world? I wonder if that star is a symbol. I overheard the shepherds say that that light was how, to, how they knew to find the baby in the manger. And those, pe those people that came into town said they were following the light too. What men? Are you kidding? You didn't see that huge caravan of rich men from the east? No, show me. We must continue to follow that star. We have come so far, we can't stop now. Our studies show that the king of Jews will be born, and that star will guide us. Our journey has brought us to this place. We have finally reached where the star stopped. We're in the right place. This looks like a strange place for a king, but the light has led us to this place. Let's go and finally see. We have come to worship him. I present to him gold and frankincense and myrrh. Rejoice, for he is the king of the Jews.
Together, they create such a beautiful picture. A picture of how big and beautiful and loving our God is. We thought we were just staying behind the scenes. We are actually part of this story. And we see God put these pieces together to show us his amazing love. He was he came as a promise to us. Taylor, this changes everything. God is here. He was born to save us. But now we can't help but to tell the world of his amazing love.
Hey, can we get another hand for these sweet kiddos and everybody? Amen. And I, I, want, I want to ask these ladies in the front row right here that helped make this possible. Can you ladies stand real quick that uh, worked and did such a good job? With the, can we stand for them and thank them? Praise the Lord for that. Absolutely. Y'all want to give them a big hand? Are you excited? You can be seated there for a moment. I want to thank... Uh, each and every person who did such a good job. And I want to thank you kiddos for doing such a good job tonight and presented such a great picture of what Christmas is all about, which is ultimately the gospel message. And uh, one of the things that we want to be here at Eden Baptist Church is a church that reaches the next generation. And one of the reasons why we're passionate about that, about reaching the next generation, because we really do believe that it is the greatest message that's ever been told. And we believe that it really is a true story. And so I'm going to ask uh, Brother Ron, he's going to come and play softly here in this moment. And I just want to share with you as we get ready to conclude. Some of you may be members at Enon here, and we're going to look forward to seeing you in the days ahead as we continue to worship and celebrate Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Some of you may be members at Bible preaching churches, and, uh, and you have a personal relationship with Christ, and we praise God for that. But if you don't have a church home, or maybe you're far from Christ here tonight, we want to remind you that the story that our kiddos talked about tonight is a real story. Is it really did happen over 2,000 years ago? The Bible speaks about all the working of God in the Old Testament, all the prophecies that were speaking of a coming Savior. And then suddenly after the prophet Malachi, there was a span of time of hundreds of years where God had not spoken. But then suddenly out of that darkness, out of that silence, God spoke. And when he came, he spoke to Mary. And this was the first that we see there. He was saying that you will, bear, you will bear a son. and His name will be called Emmanuel, which is God is with us. And he will save our people from their sins. This is the same promise we see that the angel spoke to the shepherds. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you who is Christ the Lord. You know, I think if there's anything that we've all recognized in the last couple of years is that darkness is real. And people have existed and lived in it. And if anything, being isolated and going through pandemics and thinking about the frailty of life, as it's pointed us in many cases, it's pointed us to, to look inside and where does our hope really rest? And the promise of the gospel is that there is something to have your hope in. There is a God who really loves you. And the Bible says that He sent His Savior to this earth because we were all separated from this God. We're all separated from the God who created us. But ultimately, He sent His Son. And many of you know the story is that He didn't stay in a manger. He said He grew to be a man and He was sinless in all that He said and did. And then ultimately, He did go to the cross. And on the cross of Calvary, Jesus Christ took the sin of the world so that you and I could come into a life-changing relationship with Him. It's not just about heaven or hell. It absolutely is about heaven or hell. But it's not just about the eternity. It's also about our lives here today. It's about living and walking in the design that God created for us. And I will say something to you here today. It doesn't matter what you're pursuing in life. It doesn't matter where your place is in life. Something will always be missing if you're not walking with the God who created you. And that's what Christmas is all about. It's about God stepping into this world and saying there is more. I am more Come to know me. One of our favorite Christmas hymns is Long lay the world in sin and error pining Till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. Jesus Christ coming to this earth was God's love letter to each and every one of us in this room tonight that we could know him. And as the pastor here at Enon Baptist Church and just as a brother in Christ, and I would say this whether I'm a preacher or not, is that if you do anything well this Christmas, I encourage you, know the Savior who came for you. Let it not just be another holiday season. Come to know Jesus if you don't know Him. If you do know Him, but you're far from Him, afresh and anew, I encourage you to, to go and say, Jesus, I want to know you. I want to walk with you. If you're a father here tonight, grab your family together and afresh and anew say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Point your children and point the people around you to what really matters. And ultimately, it's Jesus. And so I'm going to invite you right there where you are. with Maybe just bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. And I want to invite you first that if you don't know Jesus, if you really don't know Jesus tonight, but you want to know Him, I encourage you right there where you are. He is listening to you. 
He is listening for the calls of people who are searching for him. And would you say, dear Jesus, I don't know you, but I want to know you. I believe you died on the cross for my sin, and I believe you love me. So I ask you, save me, Lord Jesus. Save me. I'm also going to invite you, if you're right there where you are, and you're kind of just going through life, you're raising kids, you're going to work, and, but honestly, if, if, you're, if you really look at your regular life, are you walking with Jesus? Maybe you know Him, or maybe you're just far from Him. And right now, let that end. The God who loves you is waiting for you to come back. Right there where you are, would you just say, Dear Jesus, I want to come back. I'm sorry that I've been distant. But I confess my sin and I say, Jesus, I want to walk with you fresh and anew. Revive my heart and my life in you. Lord, we love you tonight. God, we thank you so much, God, for the opportunity to come. Lord, if, if Christmas says anything to us here today, it's the invitation to come. It's the invitation to come to know to a God who came to know us. And Lord, I ask in Jesus' name right now for every soul who may have just called out to you to save them. Lord, I pray, God, that that faith would take deep root, God. And I pray you'd do a life-changing work. God, for those who in this room tonight, they know you, but maybe they called out to you or maybe they're, they know they need to. God, I pray for revival work in the hearts and lives of people. Lord, I pray that we would not be invested so much in the things of this world. Is it, God, that we would puts you first and foremost, Lord, because in there, in that place is only where I find satisfaction and fulfillment. And so, God, I ask you, Lord, would you do that for your name and glory? And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, I want to thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, tonight. I want to ask you to stand, and uh, we are going to be dismissed. But as we dismiss this, one of the things that we do here at Indian Baptist Church is that at the conclusion of every one of our services is I take a moment to bless uh, our church family. So I want to bless you tonight. And do we have anything else as we close? Okay, so if you want to take pictures with your kiddos and all that good stuff, you feel free to do that. And again, as you leave, uh, be sure all of our visitors and guests grab one of those uh, Christmas ornaments that's off our table out there. Let that be our gift uh, to you and we'd love to see you back here at Eden in the days ahead if I can pray for you in any way uh, my wife and I will be hanging around up front if, if uh, you made a spiritual decision and I would love to be able to follow up with you on that so let me bless you tonight may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face shine upon you may the Lord lift up his countenance towards you and give you his peace in Jesus name amen have a great evening see Sunday